Hydra Publications is your one stop for the best in genre fiction. Secrets and Blood is the debut horror novel from Dewey Hensley. Evangeline Grace, the sheriff in a small town, eastern Kentucky coal mining county, longs to start a new life in another place. However, present and past evils conspire to jeopardize her plans and end the lives of those she loves, including her brother Sheldon, whom she promised to protect. Drugs, feuds, and her beliefs stand in the way of identifying the notorious Highlander in time to live her dream. However, menace reaches for Madison County's past. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about energetic healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit. From the ground up, Books and Resources is more than just a place to buy books. We are a center that nourishes the passions of writers, artists, and book lovers alike. Our programs help educate writers and artists. Our holistic items and Reiki services offer a unique opportunity to build individuals from the ground up. Sign up for one of our memberships today and support us and bring our vision to life. 5% of all memberships will go towards prize money for contests and scholarships for our programs. Book donations are always welcome. Visit fromthegroundupbooks.com for more information. Hello and welcome to Weirdos in the Wild with our co-host, A.J. Oxley, paranormal investigator with Beyond This Life Paranormal and multi-generational paranormal enthusiast, and Lynn Tencher, Beyond This Life Paranormal Investigator, Reiki Master, Published Author, and Near-Death Experiencer. Travel with them, a couple of everyday weirdos, on a wild ride to all things paranormal and metaphysical. Hey everybody, welcome back to Weirdos in the Wild. My name's AJ. And I'm Lynn. And... Today, we have someone that you guys have talked to before with us. Hi, guys. It's Blair again. <laughs> Blair McDaniel, the informal mystic, joining us again today. And we've got a crazy show going on today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, this has been a while since we've done this, but Blair went with us on a investigation mm-hmm. to Randolph County Asylum. Asylum yes. Yeah. And um, so we were over in Indiana and were able to tour it. And this was the first time that Blair had ever been on a investigation. Paranormal investigation, mm-hmm. yeah. Didn't know what to expect. So she went with us and with our friends from Oldham County Paranormal and our group of, from Beyond This Life. And we had the whole place to ourselves that night. We brought nice. all the weirdos. All the weirdos. <laughs> I mean, it was huge. We needed, like, another <clears throat> horde of weirdos to really do the whole... Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hit the table, I know. <laughs> Start right. again. We needed a whole other horde of weirdos to, like, really get the whole investigation done. There was so much ground to cover. We could go back, like, four more times and, like, just go to different parts. I don't mm-hmm. think anybody investigated the attic. And the attic was wild. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we just needed more time. We needed more time. I would have liked to have had some more time. And if it wasn't so cold oh at that point God. either, yeah. I would have loved crazy. to investigate it outside in the barns a little yeah. bit. Yeah. It was really, really cold. Yeah, the we thing went- that was getting me by was Haley bar- let me borrow her um, <clears throat> her ear 
ear cover thing uh-huh. and I used it as like a glove and I like wrapped these tiny little hot hands in the ear warmer thing to be mittens because I didn't <laughs> bring enough clothes. <laughs> yeah, didn't know what to expect on all fronts. I didn't know what to expect in the 3D or the 4D or the 5D, any of the Ds. I did not know. Just not prepared at all. So, but you took it in stride. I'll mm-hmm. tell you that much. Yeah, I mean that's pretty on brand for me. I usually go out there and I'm I'm like building my plane as I'm like falling from the sky. So, yeah, yeah. So, um, Lynn, you usually give us this. Give us a, give everybody a little bit of the history about the place because you usually do that. So, well, it was one of the homes. Yeah, I'm trying to remember because it's been a little while since yeah. we've been. But it was one of the homes that was used um, for the indigent care mm-hmm. where people lost their homes or mm-hmm. back in the day, they if they had any kind of mental challenges, they were, you know, they could reside there. Um, they lived there rent free. Mm-hmm. Um, if they could work because it was a working farm, they did work. If they didn't, that's OK. They got to live there anyway. Um, that's really the only type building it was. It wasn't like um, a hospital or, yeah. you know. Like, I kind of feel like asylum is like a little bit of a misnomer, like right. a marketing thing. Yeah, right. you know, they said that the people that lived around there called it the poor farm. Right. Because that's where the people that couldn't afford to live anywhere else went to. And yeah. I guess that, that we found out from their historian that every county in Indiana had one of these yeah. type mm-hmm. of facilities. And uh, um I mean, it's big. It was a big place, as, as Blair said. It's huge. Um, and it beautiful was, too. Yeah, mm-hmm. and it was a working farm at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and it still could be. Mm-hmm. Honestly, yeah, they've got a nice big barn and property. silos. And yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's just beautiful. So, so and, I want Blair to tell us, like, what this is your first time, mm-hmm. and I, we love to bring people into things their first time. <laughs> I'm, virg- I'm so virginal. You are. <laughs> so. I guess, what did you expect going in? And then, you know, what was your thoughts once we were there? And I guess even once we were done, I mean, yeah, because there was a lot to take. In. <laughs> it was a lot to take in. Um, so I went in flying really blind still. Like I didn't do a whole lot of prep work. I had a podcast with uh, Lynn on, on and she was on my podcast and we talked about paranormal investigation um, because, it, you know, it's it's not what I it's not the primary thing that I do, but I find so much overlay or an overlap with the things that I do do. I find um, there's there's so many past loved ones that'll come through for me in session. Um, and even in like my, my little insight sessions and uh, my little group offerings, so many past loved ones are coming through connecting. Um, and the soul is sort of uh, this transcendent thing, right? So uh, we can label things paranormal or quantum or energy you know we can label all kinds of things but there's this thread that goes through all of it the the uh concept of like paranormal investigation and uh, vectoring and aliens is not that much different to me it, it all feels very similar and doing the work that i do doesn't it doesn't feel that much different and so um i went into it sort of like intentionally blind i uh, got the invite and sort of like like immediately knee jerk to the yes and uh, touched base with my guides and my guides were like yeah yeah you have to go because you there's a skills gap you have a skills gap and you need to be you, we, we want you to go there to bridge this skills gap and I'm like okay skills gap that sounds cool maybe there's like more relationship work I have to do or like maybe I need to like get better at talking to strangers or <laughs> so is <laughs> a skills so gap when you say yours a skills gap for you uh-huh. okay yeah my guys are because like, we got skills gaps learning. believe us and you could you could definitely help us <laughs> you out, could park so. a truck in there yeah. <laughs> I mean <laughs> tech theoretically you could park a truck in everyone's <laughs> skills gap <laughs> depends on the skill you want to develop um but yeah so I'm, my guides are saying like there's some kind of thing that you're supposed to learn here and this will be a really really good experience for you and so it was a good um i'm really trying to get good at like using my time wisely and like uh you know like doing things that take my mission forward instead of just like doing things because they seem fun right Mm -hmm. it's a little like a discernment thing that i'm going through just like in my own personal life and so um 
when I touched base with my guys, they said, absolutely, we want you to go. And I'm thinking like, oh, this is going to be such a good opportunity. Maybe the skills gap is like my relationship with Lynn. Maybe we could get closer. Maybe I could, um, you know, like just connect with people better and blah, blah, blah. And it was that was not the skills gap. I'll just like say that <laughs> to begin with. Um, but yeah, the, the original question was, uh, you know, before I like go into the whole <laughs> what the skills gap actually was, um, I did not have prep work. Okay. I, I was really like blind to it all. So, well, there's a lot of times, I mean, you can tell we go into things blind a lot, mm. uh, but a lot of times when, we, especially me, when I go into a building, I don't want to know anything about it. Yeah. I don't want to know who's there or who's supposed to be there. I, I like the history of the building is fine with me. I don't want to know any of the claims. I don't want to know anything mm-hmm. when it comes to that. Um, Cause uh, we want to trust. Our we do. Experience. We want to, we want to <laughs> trust our experience because, um, several times we've, um, had something happen to us. And mm-hmm. then in the back end, we were like, oh, did I make that up? No. Uh, well, yeah. we, <laughs> <laughs> At first, yes, you kind of think, do we make that mm-hmm. up? But a lot of times we, we've come back and we're like, well, this happened. And people are, and then whoever has been there before and, you know, whoever or who runs the place mm-hmm. we're in or what have you, um, they'll be like, oh, yeah, that, that happens all the time. Mm-hmm. So, um, so, like a little like affirmation, like a synchronistic mm-hmm. type. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, that was interesting. I, I'm, that's what kind of why we we are. I don't. I know she doesn't like to know a whole lot either. So mm-hmm. yeah, no, because I I want to know that what I experience is valid. Mm-hmm. You know, so I you know I go into it blind, thinking okay, if I see a man in a long white coat, mm-hmm. and then I find out later that everybody else is seeing a man in a long white coat, then I know that you're, yeah, what I experience totally is real and it's not. Mm-hmm. You created something it. I created. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, with the work that I do, there is sort of this like I do it so frequently, like I'm in the energy, like, you know, sometimes I'll be in the energy day after day after day or session after session. I'll be in the energy for like eight hours at a time. Um, and I, I, I have gotten to the point where I can just validate myself. And so I, I kind of ride the fence there. Sometimes I really will like to cold read somebody because I want them to have that experience of like, oh my gosh, she's really seeing me. But sometimes it's nice to have a little framework to go exploring, right? So um, with like the, the first uh, contact we made, mm-hmm. uh, I knew the story and it was very easy for me to connect with the energy because I don't have to go and track it down. Does mm-hmm. that make sense? So yeah, I think I would probably be, I think it could just depend on the, the time, the place. Uh, what my preference would be. Well, why don't you tell us about that the experiences that we had there and okay. that, kind of how how you looked at it? Because I'm going to tell you what I looked at it completely different. Mm-hmm. And don't take this the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Please don't take this the wrong way. I am so offended already. <laughs> <laughs> now we I'm hard to I offend. Was, I, first of all, I was blown away with you with, with, with what you were mm-hmm. experiencing and how you had connected. Mm-hmm. Um, We've had some experiences where we've just, uh, people have just bullshitted us the yeah. whole night. Yeah. And you instantly blew me away mm-hmm. and with your connections. Well, why would I be mad about that again? Well, because. Because <laughs> he went at you as a skeptic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I am, okay, I got I am yeah. these. Like a natural. I, I'm skeptic about them. a yeah. lot of things and are that, um, that have come back and just hit me right in the ass. And then I'm like, okay, I see you now. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, yeah. um, one of them is because we have been around some people that, I mean, my dog could have told me, but mm-hmm. you know, I mean, better yeah. things than, than what sure. they've told For me. Sure. So, yeah. but you were like instantly, you were like connecting because like, well, tell the story because okay. I okay. was kind of in the middle. And you, you were, you were like my trans- I was literally <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I didn't really know anybody. I knew Lynn and I sort of knew AJ a little bit. Uh, and then I knew, I knew Missy a little bit, but um, as far as like going into this group of people and like integrating my capacities and my talents, it was really weird. Like I didn't know how it was going to work, right? You guys show up like all this equipment, you got the balls and you got the detectors, the this, the that, and it's like so cool. Um, but I'm going in just like as a channel and as a um, you know person who can connect, who's attuned their capacities to connect with the energy, and um, it's really hard to figure out where to fit. If that makes sense. Sure. Um, and so uh, I arrived and uh, just sort of quickly uh, realized that 
I wasn't like no one was going to tell me what to do. <laughs> I was like waiting on somebody to be like, here, hold this, do this, think that. What's what about this? And I'm like, hang on. No, that's not necessarily the right approach. Like I need to to pull into my own power, into my own capacities and have an experience. Right. Like I'm not there to I mean, I was there to make friends. I really like you guys. I really want you to like me and I want to be a friend with you all. Um, but I can do that. I don't have to go to a paranormal investigation to do that. Right. 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 Um, and so I wasn't going there with the the sole purpose of making friends with you all and like, um, you know, seeing, you know, like like learning how to do paranormal investigation. I was going there for an experience with uh, the energy, with the uh, thing, the thing we call ghosts the thing we call paranormal, I was going there to see for myself what it was like. And so pretty quickly after we got our tour from that, oh, I just love that guy. <laughs> I just loved him so much. He was this, uh, this like elderly person who gave us this very detailed um, description of like who was there and what they were doing and um, you know, the lives of the people that lived there. And he had such a regard for the people there. It just felt like he was a very good um, story keeper, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and so after we got to experience him and his just like adorable energy, I wish I could have hugged him, but that probably would have been weird. <laughs> uh, but after that, we immediately kind of transitioned into the investigation. And so you all set up your equipment in this little boy's room he wasn't like a little, little boy. He was like 12, I think. Um, and he had passed away from, was it tuberculosis? It was like a lung. Fall. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was tuberculosis. <clears throat> um, but that's where we kind of set up. And at first I was kind of just like watching and like lingering and just like uh, trying to figure out where I fit in. And then eventually I was just like, I need a chair. I need to just tap in and figure out what's going on. And so I was sitting on the wall and I started connecting with his energy and channeling what was coming through. I wasn't channeling to anyone, um, but I was just having this really independent experience of this child. And you were independent of us. You were in the hallway. I was in the hallway we with, in a room. With, with me, AJ. AJ. Yeah. And then everybody else was in the room. Yeah, everybody else was in the room asking questions, um, making contact with the tools that you all had. Mm -hmm. And so I was having this independent experience connecting to his energy, trying to understand what I was connecting with, trying to understand how this differs from what I connect with in session um, and trying to figure out like what a ghost is and <laughs> how it functions, how it exists in what plane it's existing. I'm really, really curious about mechanics and like how things work because it, it makes the path easier for me to get back next time. And so I'm sitting there and I'm channeling and uh, AJ picks up on it. AJ read the energy that I was putting off and it's like he knew that I was seeing things and having this experience with this, this uh, child. And um, it was, it was really sweet. You guys, <laughs> uh, I probably could have just had like a really vibrant experience on my own, but AJ was really invested in, um, making me part of things and uh, really, probably it may have even been selfish like you may have just been like curious to see what was going on for me but he, he kind of pulled it out and he's like hey you I can tell you got something going on what's going on and I'm like oh god here we go <laughs> yeah so I everybody in the room had their equipment mm -hmm. and so we had the portal going at that time mm -hmm. and you all were in there asking questions mm -hmm. and I was hearing the questions being asked mm -hmm. and then like you said I could tell you were channeling yeah. and that you had connected mm -hmm. and so at that point I was really I was curious I mm -hmm. guess is a good way to put it I yeah. was curious because I was hearing them ask questions and then I wanted to know what you were getting uh -huh. were you getting a different person mm -hmm. were you getting the same person was that person answering the same questions was it were they not mm -hmm. and i'll be damned if they weren't answering the questions because they were asking the questions mm -hmm. you would get the answer first and then they would get the answer on the portal yeah mm -hmm. it, was, it was freaking wild uh so <laughs> and you would tell me because you would tell me mm -hmm. and then i would hear it in here and i was like, <laughs> wow <Yeah. laughs> she's on it tonight yeah 
Yeah. So I was <clears throat> connecting with this uh, child energy. Okay. So I kind of want to like um, get really detailed about what I was seeing okay. because I feel like it was it's it was just it's one of the one of the more profound things I've experienced. And there's so many layers to that singular experience and time with this specific energy that um, I'm still I'm still working with right now. Um, like, and it's been a couple through three months. It's been a few months. It's been a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So I was just sitting there, and I had called in this boy's energy, and um, I would I would say that I'm like a recovering savior. Like I like to go in and save people and fix things, and like that's not always a good thing right like there's times when like helping is not what is needed um and so i went in there with like this sense of superiority like i'm gonna go if there's a ghost that wants to pass over i'm gonna go save all the ghosts i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that and so i call this child into my energy and i'm matching his frequency and the uh vibe that he gave off the energy he gave off was just this blissful joyful um youthful uh fulfilling experience and it was so jarring i was like wait 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 you're a ghost like ghosts aren't happy what is this and he's like oh no this is such a good life for me um and what i saw was he had this experience with his father that was not good um, his father left to go to war. His mother and him and his siblings, I don't know how many siblings there were, but they came and they lived this uh, life of, of care and protection and community. There was a lot of community energy around this child. Um, he would go out into the fields and farm with the older men. And he was like, I love it here. I don't know why you think I won't. I wouldn't. Right. And so the energy shifted into, OK, well, if you don't need me to help you pass on or like fix your situation, what do you need from me? And he was like, well, I could I could use a mother's love. And it was really, really sweet. And um, it was like emotional. And I just kind of pivoted. And I'm like, OK, I'll give you a mother's love. I'm a mom. I know how to um, do that. And I, I just archetypally, even though I don't know you on a 3D personal level, I still have deep love for you. And so I was uh, connecting with this child and, um, you know, just having this vibrant emotional experience <laughs> in the middle of all. <laughs> and AJ's like, what are you seeing, girl? What are you seeing? And I'm like, AJ, if I could tell you everything I'm seeing... <laughs> Uh, and so what I kind of settled on was like, well, okay, he likes to run. That's that's one of his favorite things. He would race down the halls and then the box thingy. What is it called? The portal. The portal. Uh -huh. Which would, is that just a ghost box of picking up? Work? Basically. Welcome back to Weirdos in the Wild. Before we return to our program, AJ and I would like to take a moment to remember my brother, John Tincher, co-founder of Beyond This Life Paranormal, and Alan Oxley, AJ's father, both passed away just before we recorded our first episode. Each and every episode going forward from this one on will be in remembrance of them. Thank you. Hydra Publications is your one stop for the best in genre fiction. Secrets and Blood is the debut horror novel from Dewey Hensley. Evangeline Grace, the sheriff in a small town, Eastern Kentucky coal mining county, longs to start a new life in another place. However, Present and past evils conspire to jeopardize her plans and end the lives of those she loves, including her brother Sheldon, whom she promised to protect. Drugs, feuds, and her beliefs stand in the way of identifying notorious Highlander in time to live her dream. However, menace reaches from Madison County's past. Do you struggle with depression, ongoing medical issues, or have you experienced past trauma? If you have, please consider the help of Energetic Healing. At Dragonfly Pond Holistic Services, we utilize Karuna Reiki, crystals to align and heal chakra function, meditation, and sound healing to address these issues and help you in your healing process. To learn more about Energetic Healing and how to contact us, visit our website at dragonflypondenergy.com. For those who call in to schedule an appointment, mention this ad and receive $25 off your initial visit.
From the ground up, Books and Resources is more than just a place to buy books. We are a center that nourishes the passions of writers, artists, and book lovers alike. Our programs help educate writers and artists. Our holistic items and Reiki services offer a unique opportunity to build individuals from the ground up. Sign up for one of our memberships today and support us and bring our vision to life. 5% of all memberships will go towards prize money for contests and scholarships for our programs. Book donations are always welcome. Visit fromthegroundupbooks.com for more information. Okay. An amplifier. Yeah. So then the, the ghost box would say, run. And then uh, they were, he was showing me that he liked to go out on the farm and which my dad told me that he used to do this as a child. So it was interesting that it came up and I'm like, maybe I made that up. Um, but he would chase down rabbits and he would like make the, ra- he'd run a rabbit and then it would stop. And then he'd run the rabbit again and it'd run and it'd stop. And he'd get it to where it was so tired that he could catch it with his bare hands. And uh, then I think late the next word on the, the portal was rabbit mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. Um, and... I don't know, just like over and over again, I would tell you something and... And it would be on the portal. Be on the Mm -hmm. portal, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, And then the experience pivoted. It wasn't like... It was... It went from this experience of being being like a mothering energy to this uh, entity, this being that was occupying this space, this dimensional frequency... And all of a sudden, something came up behind me and put its hand, I don't know what it was, but it put its hand on my shoulder and it said, uh, it like leaned over me. And this is all happening. It's happening physically. My shoulders is experiencing the feeling of being touched and like tightening up. Uh, But it's happening like in my mind, you know, like I can't, AJ wasn't like, oh, dude, there's something behind you, (laughs) right? There's no like, like provable way of any of this. Um, But in my mind, this entity comes up behind me because I was having such a vulnerable, unguarded experience with this being, this child that I was uh, connected with. And he puts his his hand on my shoulder and points ahead and he says, look. And I'm like, what am I looking at? What am I looking at? This is scary. I don't like this. And it was hurting my shoulder. And uh, I, I look at my guide uh, because they're there too. And I say, help me. You were supposed to keep me safe. And my guide says, skills gap. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> what Hello, here's hell? your skills gap. <laughs> <laughs> no warning, no nothing. Um, and so I immediately energetically, uh, put, put blocks up, put, put barriers up and sort of banish that, that entity, that presence from my energy, but was, I could tell it it had left something behind, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was, it, it had left something behind and I was like, I don't know how to get this thing out. Well, you had told me that you felt like there was something behind you at one Uh point. And like you said, it wasn't like I could see uh-huh. it. Um, that has happened before where, yeah. where you I did saw see it. it behind uh-huh. her <laughs> at a different location yeah. one time. So um, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, and you, do you felt like it was something that was bad or it was going to hurt you? Or, or did you think it was just something that was like wanting you to like, like it was in charge and it didn't want you to mess with the boy anymore? Um, it didn't feel like it cared about the boy. Okay. It, it felt connected to the boy in a peripheral way. It wasn't like connected to the boy. At first I was like, is this the boy's father? What's going on mm-hmm. here? How does this make sense in the story? Um, and why is it telling me to look? Um, and it did feel like dark. It felt, and the funny thing is, is that Lynn, like when we did the podcast, the first podcast, I was like, do you think that there's dark things? And we're like, no, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think anything's going to hurt you. Then um, wham. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's like alter your belief. Um, and the, here, here's the thing she about, I know, what a freaking liar. I was so unprepared. I was like, Lynn said that this wouldn't happen. <laughs> no. Um, what what they showed me, because I, I was like, I was, I'm autonomous. What, what took place? Because I've been working on this theme ever since. I've been like trying to understand, trying to make sense of what it left in my shoulder. 
And um, my guides have shown me that this is a, at, at a certain dimensional level, uh, this is something that I, I volunteered to take on. This is something that I invited into my energy. And that's the only way it could get there. It wasn't a non-consensual thing, um, even though it felt so shocking and jarring. Uh, but at a certain level, I wanted to experience the illusion of being uh, harmed, and that's in air quotes, by this entity, by this energy. Um, and as I continue working with this entity, because I actually can feel it in my shoulder right now, as I continue working with it, uh, what it seems to me is this toxic masculine archetype. Uh, and it's this transcendent, it, this is this is probably really weird. I'm glad I'm talking about this on the weirdos, weirdos in podcast. the wild. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's almost like there's this uh, dark animating force that is influencing um, the masculine, the divine masculine right now. And uh, the more acquainted with it I am, the easier it will be for me to work with it. And so I've taken it on. It's in the the right side. It was on the right shoulder. Uh, the right side of the body is the masculine. And um, I am I have this in my energy body so that I can really, really get good and acquainted with it and get really good at working with it. And that's like a, not a traditional approach. Like, no, I've never met somebody like, I'm taking on this dark energy so I can learn how to work with it. That's just not what I don't know it's probably not a great practice but for whatever reason it's the one that I picked I keep coming up with it's a practice entity Mm -hmm. it'll go away when you master it but it's Uh a practice entity yeah 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 and so it thinks it's you know Uh like and at some level right like okay we're all god we're all energy we're all source we're all just consciousness manifesting into different forms and so at some level it also knows Mm -hmm. that this is the agreement we have oh i'm gonna go i'm gonna put this thing in her shoulder it's gonna happen here and this will teach her this uh and it also has that veiled illusion of overpowering me does that make sense Mm -hmm. yeah so, so do you think this is your gap that you have to fill to be able yeah. to, um, I guess, work with these dark entities or, or? Protection. Well, I definitely need to learn how to energetically protect myself, yeah. right? Um, if I'm going to have moments of intimacy with beings that have passed on, if I'm going to get to know their stories and like really be able to meet their needs mm-hmm. um, in that plane, uh, I need to... Put, put things in place beforehand. So there's one skills gap. Um, the next skills gap that is like maybe a level up of, uh, on the dimension or the, like that's, a, that's an acute example. And what I'm working with now is a more general example of being able to handle uh, the presence of a toxic masculine energy, right? And so I've had so many opportunities since then to work with uh, the unhealthy masculine. <laughs> And I hate that for me, but <laughs> uh, I have found myself in the the very, very recent path, past, like I'm literally talking about like last week, mm-hmm. um, where I am like awakening into uh, the benefits of really helping the unhealthy masculine heal, right? There are a lot, uh, working with uh, men, uh, th- they're a lot sturdier than working with some women, right? I can just say the thing and... Uh, I don't have to mince words. I don't have to put it in like nice packaging. I can just be like, listen, you're triggered. You're acting like an ass because you're triggered. And so there's this real like power that I'm kind of finding because I integrated this masculine energy. I, I am so familiar with it and I'm getting, I can just feel myself getting more and more comfortable, uh, sitting with it and helping it shift. So there's skills gap number two. I'm going to ask you this. So we, cause you're talking about the the energy or the dark thing. We you were in the basement with us, right? Mm-hmm. When we experienced that. Yeah, that was the next wild experience. Mm. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask. My so, first of this kind. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> so we experienced. Um, just for everyone to know, we were in the basement of this of this building, and we had kind of two things going on at once. Um, Susan from Olden County Paranormal had experienced something as she walked down the hallway toward us Mm -hmm. um, and it had came out of one of the rooms there 
And I don't even know if you knew this or not. That she I think is. I was gone. I don't know where I was. She had walked upstairs to do something. And then she came back downstairs. And as she was walking back down this long hallway toward us, she had experienced something. And Susan doesn't get rattled. No, she doesn't. No. Yeah, she doesn't seem like... She doesn't get rattled at all. She's tough cookie. I think she rattles the ghosts. She... (laughs) And she kind of came back and she kind of stood behind me and kind of like looked Mm -hmm. around me. And I was like, she saw something. Yeah. Because she's not that way. Yeah. And she was like, it's right down. AJ, look down there. Look down there. On the right. That room about halfway down. So we were watching that. Mm -hmm. Now... If you think about the, just so everybody knows, there's like a long hallway, a wall, and then another hallway, and then there's a big room over here on this, would be what, on our left side. Mm-hmm. That's where we were seeing this, what do you want to call it? Shadowy, demon-looking thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was unlike anything I think I've ever seen before, because it mm-hmm. was so formed. Yeah. I mean, we've seen things that had maybe, possibly, like the Creeper at Waverly, you get that kind of... Mm-hmm. It could be a demony feel, but yeah. it was really a blurred image where this, I could see the definition of what it was. And it was not like anything I have mm-hmm. ever seen. And look at my goosebumps oh, I've got right now because I'm thinking about it. Again. Yeah. Those are frequency bumps. When you yeah. land on the truth, they come. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we saw it. And then you and I had another experience mm-hmm. with this thing. Yeah. That blew my mind. <laughs> That's one of my favorites. So was that. Do you think that was a different dark entity? Than uh, what I feel like it was. I feel like it was. Um, well, okay. So because I had, when you were connecting, it was. It, I just wanted to know if it was, you felt like it was something different. I felt like it was something different. I don't know. That about, was just. Are, that you, was, are you talking about the one in the hallway? The one I was the, talking the about one the one in the, the hallway shoulder. versus the one in oh, the basement. That feels yeah. different to me. Okay. Um, but okay, so I had gotten my chair again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Apparently, I like to sit when I channel. So I had my chair, and we were connected with Doris. Who was the lady from that the was most the, precious? She was the cook, story. right? Yeah, yeah. She, she, was the cook. she was twelve. Was the yeah. cook. she was yeah. like twelve or fourteen? And uh, here, okay, so here's the third skills gap. I'm connecting with with Doris, and I hear I go again, and I'm like, this lady probably wants me to help her pass over because I'm so qualifying to do that. <laughs> and I hope you guys hear the sarcasm in my voice. <laughs> it's my first ghost hunt, and I'm like, come to me, ghosts, I'll help you. <laughs> Um, but I connect with her and I'm like, are you happy here? Like what, what, what is going on with you? Tell me your story. And she was so happy. She was so happy. And, uh, it was this, let me tell you this. Okay. This is one of the things that John taught me Mm -hmm. is that, you know, when I first met John, I asked him thousands of questions Mm -hmm. every night we ghost hunt together. And one of the things I asked him is why do you think a ghost or an entity stays where it is? Yeah. And his one of his things was he always believed that they stayed where they were happy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can get by. I can get by on that. Well, based upon the experience that I have with those two um, beings, that I those were probably the primary beings that I connected. I connected with uh, a couple more up in the recreation room, which me and Lynn had a completely different experience in the recreation room. Um, but we had kind of made our way down to the basement, and every single uh, connection I made was. This just like I'm here because I want to be here. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a choice of free will, um, and that was actually one of the most educational parts for me uh, because she was this very like equipped being equipped uh, person who came to me and she's like ah. Oh, your shoulder and so she comes behind me and she's like doing energy healing on my shoulder and she is teaching me as i'm doing energy healing and i'm like well why can't we see you why aren't you connecting and interacting with the equipment uh and she was like well there's we okay so she this is hard to explain she's like every ghost has a different which i mean they don't call themselves ghosts that's (laughs) and i have such a hard time talking about it now because i've met they're being they're people guys they're people Right. Like we like to turn them into like this scary thing or whatever, but they're people. And so she comes to me and she's like every being that is manifesting in this way as uh, the way that we would call classically ghost. uh, She says they have a cycle and as they cycle through uh, their timeline and they're hitting, you know, like, I guess what would be like a month for us, uh, they move 
closer and further from this dimension. And she's saying, I'm far from this dimension. She was saying, I'm far from this dimension right now. And the only way you can really access me is through the astral plane, which is what you're doing right now. Um, and so uh, it was just so interesting how, because she was kind of showing me like the cycle of the moon and like how things are so cyclical and how the cycle also uh, rules or or doesn't rule, it influences that dimension also. Um, and so I don't feel like we connected with her in the three dimensional with the tools at all, Mm-mm. but she was just saying, well, I'm further away. You can't connect with me right now. But she was also saying that she uh, has stayed in that time and in that place because she wants to connect with people. She wants to kind of break our understanding of what is normal and what is not normal. And so, um, it's like her delight to like invite us into the paranormal because it is helping earth ascend the vibration, right? When Mm -hmm. we have these rote definitions of what is normal and what is not normal, we uh, are stagnant and she is occupying this space so that she can help break that stagnancy. And she really is serving uh, because this is a place that does like ghost tours so she kind of feels like that's like a life purpose. And then she'll every every once in a while, she'll meet people like me and we'll have a deeply connected experience. So that was her thing down there. And then as I'm working with her, she's working on my shoulder. I don't see it. I feel it or I see it with my my third eye or whatever. Lynn's on the other side of the room. I'm on the far left <laughs> side of the room. So I can only see a tiny little window into that room. The lens on the other side of the room and all of a sudden out of the depths of something (laughs) don't know how to explain that through the wall through the wall there's like a crack in the wall but it's also like a crack in dimensional reality Mm -hmm. there is like a crawly thing like a like a it looked like a dog but it almost looked backwards or something and had this almost like a hunchback it had a Mm -hmm. a thing on it (laughs) Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. It was very like shadow energy. And so I'm working with uh, Doris and I'm like, what is that? And she's like, oh, they come through every now and then. And I'm like, okay, just real flipping about it. So (laughs) it wasn't a big deal with Doris, huh? Yeah. Uh, And I was like, is this evil? And she was like, well, what do you mean by evil? Like, it does not consider itself evil. It just considers itself hungry. It just looks for energy. And you guys are a lot of energy Uh, right here. And so it comes through because it's a lot of energy. And immediately at that point, I had learned the lesson, right? I bridged that skills gap really fast. And I put protection, like I I put the energy wall up for us all. Um, And at that point, Lynn was tapping into it also, Mm -hmm. right? She was seeing it and I I had the wall and... And I I actually sat down. Yeah. I saw it and then I sat down. And when I sat down, there was like a bar kitchen... Mm-hmm. This bar thing in the middle of the kitchen like uh-huh. work area it was behind that so i couldn't see it anymore mm-hmm. but i was still seeing it yeah. in my mind's eye mm-hmm. just like you were mm-hmm. yeah so we had like this joint channeling experience yeah. it was freaking wild it was crazy so what i was seeing because i was i was to the right view a few like probably three to four feet away from you at that point mm-hmm. i was watching something that looked like what i thought looked like the creeper that we had experienced at at um, it was close. Yeah. Waverly. To me, it was that I didn't really see like anything that was definite, but I saw mm-hmm. a big mass that was dark mass, like mm-hmm. black, black, that was, you know, and it was blacking out the wall. You couldn't see the wall behind it. And, um, but it was down low. Mm-hmm. Like it yeah, was like, like, uh, like, yeah, like it yeah, was down it low long against arms. I feel like we were calling it like a hell dog or something. I was like, Lynn, it feels like a hell dog. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, yeah, it does. Now, but this, <coughs> was this at the same time something pushed you? No. That, that was up in the rec room. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we <clears throat> were having this like joint channeled experience. I've got us all like behind the glass or behind the energetic barrier. Uh, and I'm like, well, what do I do now? And me and Lynn at the same time, we were like, okay, let's tell it to leave. Mm-hmm. We, I mean, it was like so wild, Lynn. We were so tapped in yeah. on the same frequency. And we're both like, okay, it just needs to leave. Like, just go on back home. And, uh, and we're I just said, like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. If we were doing that, not, neither one of us said a word on mm-hmm. what we were doing until I said, are you seeing it back away? 
And you said, <laughs> yeah. yes, because uh-huh. I just told She's it to leaving. leave. And I'm like, to leave. me too. <laughs> Yeah, so and we it was were even gone. like giving it the same. Yeah, then it went away. Uh-huh. And we walked in there and there was remember there was like a brick that was missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was like it had came from there and it mm-hmm. left from there. Yeah. yeah. And I, I after I was trying to kind of make sense of it all. I always want to make sense of it all. It's probably not I do that always too. the healthiest, but uh, when I was like exploring it later, I um so okay, you've seen uh what's it called? It's gone. What is that freaking show? The under the upside down? Oh, Stranger, Stranger Things. Stranger Things. Things. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <clears throat> what they were what they were showing me was there's there's all sorts of dimensional reality stacked on top of uh, one another, right? We've got the ghosts and the fairies and the all of these things kind of stacking on top of one another, and it it left its upside down or it's like mirrored shadow mm-hmm. realm and slipped over into ours uh well it wasn't even technically ours it was like a another click over because it wasn't a physical 3d form it was energetic but it slipped into our dimension and we just go on back go on mm-hmm. back down the drain man um so yeah that was what happened yeah that was pretty pretty cool so mm-hmm. i think that was the first thing that got me yeah nervous the second thing that happened to me made me want to quit ghost hunting. That was and upstairs. I, I left. That I was the second thing. That was the second thing. And, and then downstairs was the third thing. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So I but tell us about the <laughs> the other thing. That- <laughs> the other thing. Um, we were standing in the rec room, and we were looking down the hall. And we had a mm-hmm. light grid up so that we could see, you know, if anything went past that would absorb the light because the you know, the light wouldn't reflect back that disappears when there's um, a dark, darker energy there. So we were watching a shadow person that would peek his head out occasionally and pull it back from another room down the hall. And AJ is standing to my left and suit. Um, Shannon is sitting in the floor to my right. And all of a sudden two hands hit me on the chest and shoved me backwards enough that I went Oof, and took mm-hmm. two steps back like kaboom. And Shannon was going, oh, my God, I heard that. Are you okay? Yeah. I'm like, no, I just got pushed. And I stood there for just a second, and I'm like, I'm done. I grabbed all my equipment. I went back to base <laughs> camp and sat down, and I'm like, I, I don't think I can do this because something mm-hmm. physically shoved me. Mm-hmm. And then I sat there for like five minutes. I'm like, no, I'm not letting them win. I'm, I went right back <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> went right back to ghost hunting. But. And then it, it pushed me again, too. It pushed my shoulder forward. Yeah, it pushed you twice. Yeah. So it's the second sh- time that hand- you were like, oh, hell no. Yeah. It yeah. was the two-handed front, uh-huh. you know, on my chest, and then one from behind on my, my yeah. left shoulder that pushed me forward. And I'm like, this this thing is pushing me around. So I don't what, like this. what energy did you get from it? It was negative, but it it, like, I didn't feel like it was dangerous. Uh-huh. But it definitely felt dark and negative, like it didn't want me there or it mm-hmm. was at least trying to get my attention. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. I but it didn't come with me when I left. a different experience. Yeah. I was seeing the rec room in like its heyday and it was just so full of joy. Um, there were some uh, like there were some people who were mentally challenged. And um, I, th- I feel like when you asked me or like you were like, hey, what's going on? That's sort of what I saw. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. I, we were just on two different planes that time. Mm-hmm. So I was seeing just people's happiest experiences. Which is so wild. Like, I, if I went in with expectations, the expectations would have been like, this is a sad, sad place. You know, a lot of death happened here. A lot of like destitute people. And right. Like, and it's run down and spooky. And, uh-huh. and well, that building's not very run down, but it's, it's not that bad. Yeah. Most haunted places are. Uh-huh. So yeah. you get that perception. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're entering with perception. Uh, and uh, I don't know. There's just like a cultural perception of like what a ghost is. Mm-hmm. And Every every thing that I channeled was just so contrary to that. Mm-hmm. I just saw just beings like there, happy to be there. And I'm, I don't think it'll always be that way. I feel like I'll probably, you know, I'll as I deepen my capacity, I just really feel like there was like lessons for me to learn, like humility. It was so humbling mm-hmm. for me to go into a place where I'm like, I can really change things. I can help this place. And the place is like let us help you. <laughs> let us help you. Let us invite you into uh, another way of perceiving reality. So yeah. beautiful. You know, I one thing you said, and you 
just so we don't get hate from other people. Mm -hmm. (laughs) A lot of people don't believe that, you know, when you go into a place, you should not help people move. Yeah. So we're not doing that. So don't give us that hate mail. We don't. (laughs) (laughs) So I wonder what that's about. Like why? Well, some places like, well, just so you know, the place we're going this weekend, you have to sign a waiver saying you don't help anybody. Oh, I wonder why. Because they so want mad. them to stay there. <laughs> they want them to stay there so people yeah. can have experience. I understand that. I get that. And we're respectful of their wishes. They own the property. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I, the last time I was there, I came home and cried my eyes out because I had an experience of somebody I couldn't help. I wasn't allowed to help when I could have. Yeah. There's there's a matter of like, um, and like, you know, if this totally violates all things that you all stand for, edit it out and like, don't get in trouble or whatever. No, but. I'm just saying that if somebody will say, this, you know, supposed to have, well, we we don't help them, but if we're in a if situation somebody comes where we to can, a, we do, we do. Yeah. And Lynn has helped people in the past, mm-hmm. and but that is a different situation. Yeah. than I mean, at this at this at this particular place, yeah, for this, sure, for sure. Yeah. I. Uh, use the energy and my connection with the sole purpose of helping right, right? like that's my mm-hmm. that's my uh, business that's i'm a quantum energy therapist i leverage and access energy to help people heal and have a really good life experience and so if ever there comes a time where a being comes to me and they're not having their their le- you know premium life experience like all of these happy little <laughs> happy beings were uh it comes to a matter of ethics for me i will assist when it's asked for and i feel like i have enough um practice in my own practice to uh know when that is right yeah. like i i don't i don't sit in the savior complex i am i help those that want help yeah. mm-hmm. and all else they can go but right? isn't it great that, that to think that those people are there and they're loving what they're doing and they're mm-hmm. there every day mm-hmm. yeah yeah that, that it makes a lot of it brings me to the question of like what is a soul right like um and i've had uh it's so multi-spectrum you guys like so the soul is such a multi-dimensional cross uh, across the spectrum of uh potential realities that uh there's a part of me out there that i'm not even aware of there's pieces of me left in places and uh you know uh, actually incarnated into other lives even uh and to limit uh, our understanding of the soul is not smart and uh every experience i have with the paranormal or otherwise uh really expands my understanding and awareness of the soul so it's all learning that's what we're here to do uh-huh. soft open so now we've got to the end of the night nope we, we have, have one more we have one more yeah, oh we got the next we morning did. it actually was the next morning that's yes. right <laughs> and you and Broad daylight susan daylight. <laughs> yeah so why don't you tell us you and susan were in the attic right no it was just me oh i thought it was susan was sorry no it was it was us three we were the ones that were like awake and like walking around mm-hmm. and like uh i was like i want to get pictures this is this place is freaking cool there's like a bunch of like mid-century modern stuff and i'm like real into vintage and so i'm just like this would be so cool for the instagram feed like the aesthetic of this place is like to die for mm-hmm. um and so we're walking on the property and like we're going to the barn and we're going you know all over going through the halls and we're going up the stairs and we're just exploring and then we get to the final floor and i'm like i wonder what's up there and you guys are like we're not going up there we're too tired and so i went up alone and i am walking down this the attic is is huge it's expansive and uh i'm just like walking from one end to the other end just to kind of see what's up there and they have like this these like chairs in the middle of this the things were like in a seancey fashion and they have these skylights that are like kind of beaming light like artistically across (laughs) the uh the the room and so i uh get to the end and i'm like this is amazing this is so freaking cool and i take a picture of me looking at the whole place uh and it just looks so so cool and artistic and so I walk down a little further and I had the heebie-jeebies. I was like, Ugh. and I didn't know why. Uh, and I'm like, it's an attic. That's probably why, because attics are scary. And like, everything just feels a little scary. And I, <laughs> it's the only time I screamed, I opened the door to see what was behind this door. And I didn't know what was behind this door. And I opened the door and the door scrapes on the floor and it goes, and I'm like, <laughs> scared the living daylights out of myself. And it turned out it was the staircase on the other end. It was just the stairs. It was just the stairs. Uh, it wasn't anything scary behind the door, but I got myself worked up and I like closed the door. And I'm like, okay, it's time to go. It's time to go. And I like go back down the hall and I'm like walking down and I'm like, oh, made it out of there. Uh, so then I come home and my son is just uh, like so intrigued by what I'm doing. He's like, mom, we got to take pictures and we got to evaluate the pictures and send them to this YouTuber and blah, blah, blah. And 
So he's going through all of my pictures to see if I had found any orbs or any shadow people or anything. And I'm like, oh, this kid, he's so silly. Uh, and then all of a sudden we're sitting at the dinner table and he's going through these pictures and he goes, mom, you found one, you got one. And it was this picture of the attic. And it was so, it was just so insanely artistic. And the placement, the ghost, it's like he knew. It's like he was posing for a picture. Mm -hmm. And he's placed up against this, the back of, of the, uh, it's like this brick wall. And uh, you can just kind of clearly see like a face with eyes, shoes. And a body. Yeah, it's like he's got shoes on. It's like his little like leg is kind of popped out a bit. And it was the most, I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Life will never be the same. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, wild, it's crazy. Tell them where you, because Blair's posted this picture. Yeah, you can go to at informalmystic.com, or you can go to informalmystic.com, but it's not there. You can go to at informalmystic on uh, Instagram. So, post on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah, and, you know, she made me mad. I've been ghost hunting for years, and I can't get a picture of one in her first try. <laughs> That's always there the it way is. it is. <laughs> you know, you just go in with this, like, dumb, you know, virginal energy. Oh, this is neat. I like ghosts. And that's who gets it. Yeah. It's not the experts. I'm sure I won't get any more. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't be so sure. Well, fingers crossed we do, but. Yeah, because you're yeah. going again. Because it felt like a collective experience. Like, yeah. like our picture, not just my picture, you know. Was, you all didn't come up there. You should have come up we there. We should have. Yeah, we should have yeah. investigated up there. But I didn't even know it was there until you went up. Yeah, it was. It's, when I look at it, what it got me about it was, is that whatever it was, the it was so dark that it had completely blocked out the that brick wall that yeah. was mm -hmm. behind it. Yeah. So there was definitely something there. I mean, people would go, oh, you could, because I, I kind of looked at it the first time and I'm, uh, I kinda, He thinks I'm good at photo editing I or did. something. I was like, nah, because I was like, sometimes you, you're, you know, like, what's the phenomenon called where your eyes matrix? Paradelia, something like that. You know what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't. So you could kind of go, okay, maybe it's the brick. But then I was like, I don't know. You can't see the brick. Yeah, I mean it's like a, a, a the whole figure. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I I kind of researched after, and there's like a the they used to hold court up there, and uh, there was a judge who was like a really harsh judge and would like sentence people to like time in prison or punishments or whatever fines, and my intuition is kind of telling me that that's who it is or what it is. Uh, and would be so interested in connecting with his energy to see if that's still an experience he wants to have. Because that one sounds bad. I mean, I, I think that objectively, if you're looking at their, any life that we heard about uh, from the mm -hmm. t year 2024, uh, they all kind of don't seem like ideal lives, right? Um, but they were most of the, the beings that are all... I, well, all the beings except for that thing, uh, they were having the great a great time. And they didn't want help shifting, and they didn't need help. Um, and if you guys want to send hate mail, send it to me uh, because <laughs> you know they they're they aren't doing the thing. I'm the one doing it. Uh, but uh, I would love to tap into his energy and see just what the experience he's having is like. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So here's another thing because Lynn is alluded to it that you guys are going actually this week you guys are going Aww, somewhere we're gonna miss you days. where i cannot i need go. a translator so um i've been to this place a couple we're not gonna tell you where it is because we're gonna keep this for our, another podcast that's right blair is gonna come back okay I'll come talk back. to us about it um because we've had some experiences here mm -hmm. and inside and outside mm -hmm. which is what i love about this place yeah um so I wanted to know what you experienced there because okay. I had a crazy freaking experience there. Yeah. Isn't that where you found your orb or something? Yeah. The damn orb, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the orb that I never believed in until I saw it there. Mm -hmm. But I had the That's other experience skeptic. I had there was pretty crazy too yeah but i'm not gonna tell you because i don't see if don't, you have yeah it. don't tell me but yes that's where i did see an orb mm -hmm. um so i kind of want to see that and i want to see what your experiences are there okay. because it is inside and outside yeah so spend some time outside this mm -hmm. time okay and watch everything yeah i'm gonna be doing it the whole night it's so fun it's so fun to be in the energy to experience this stuff it's all play. Like, I my business name is Informal Mystic because I seriously feel like my guides like gaslit me into giving myself this name because like they know I have this predisposition to take myself super seriously. <laughs> I like for things to feel fancy and professional and really cool. And so like the the longer into this business I get, the more humble I am able to get and the more silly. I am able to get and the more I'm like this is not that important <laughs> like this is equal parts so important and 
all play. It's all just like a cosmic mm -hmm. art that we're putting on. It's this cosmic dance of like, hey guys, everybody, you know, everybody put on your veil. Okay, let's get into character and play action. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, I don't know. It's just this beautiful, meaningful, meaningless dance that we're all participating in. So now, kind of to wrap it up for the night, what happened that night? Mm -hmm. um, so when you look at it, was it? What do you think when you when we were done? I mean, were you were you like, oh my god, that was cool? Were you like overwhelmed? Were you like? I had a lot to process. I had a lot to process, and I had a lot of cultural baggage to kind of put to sleep or to put to bed. Um, I no longer can just like think about ghosts in the same way that I used to think about ghosts. Uh, they're be they're humans, right? If they are a not and obviously like there's there's all kinds of energy out there, but the people who have passed away from the earthly sphere, the human sphere, uh, they're, they're beings, they're people, right? And like, I don't necessarily feel like we give that enough uh, impact as mm -hmm. a culture. Right. And uh, so that would be the, fir the main takeaway for me is that like, I can't c remain in the cultural conditioning of like, ghost, boo, scary, right? Haunted. Right. Uh, I'm I'm seeing beings that are having experiences that are needing honoring, and uh, if nothing else, if I can't help them or do whatever it is that I feel compelled to do, I can at least honor them and really add, uh, you know, just like give them what they deserve, which is being seen. Right? That's mm -hmm. what we all want. We all want to be seen, and I'm glad that I have the capacity. Uh, to see them so well we're glad you feel that way because when we go with our group we want to be very respectful mm -hmm. because like you said that those people are there that's where they live basically mm -hmm. you know yeah. and that is their you know like you talked about that is their happy place mm -hmm. we're not going to go in there and not jack things up right yeah right we yeah. want we want to be respectful i mean you probably noticed the way we talk to them too mm -hmm. you know, thank you for talking to us yeah mm -hmm. you know Thank you for letting us be here. Um, Can't come home with us. But. No. Um, <laughs> and I usually kind of at the beginning of the night, one of the things I always do is kind of silently say to my head, you know, first of all, I tell them, thank you for letting us be here. Mm -hmm. We've come here to, to talk to you, to maybe see you. Mm -hmm. We're not here to harm you. We're not here yeah. to disrespect you in any way yeah. or disrespect your home. And, I'm glad that you feel that way too, because it's, it's, it's not that stuff that you see on TV. Yeah. It's not a, it's not a game. Mm -mm. It's not a freaking game. <clears throat> mm -mm. It actually kind of, uh, these days, now that I've had an experience, I'll see the stuff on TV and I'll just be like, that is so gross. Bullshit. That is so gross. <laughs> I'll say it. Yeah. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's bullshit some of, and some it's, of it is bullshit. Yes. It's gross. Some of it's not. Some of it's not. We yeah. know, I mean, we know people who who have been on TV and mm -hmm. we know people that, you know, know those very famous people. Yeah. And some of those people are, are not that way at all. Mm -hmm. They are very yeah. respectful and what they do is real. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just the media who turns it into this, like, I mean, I know, I know that, uh, that's what sells. scary yeah. sells, mm -hmm. but right. you know what else sells like human connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if we could, if us three could come up with a TV show where we're like honoring human connection and like, like, giving the light side of this, mm -hmm. it could be, I don't know. I personally feel like it could be a hit. So if any, if any TV heard producer, it hatch here, <laughs> yeah, actually any producers <laughs> want to come and do this, we could do it. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel so, uh, uh, almost, you know, like, like when you come into something and you kind of see like a little bit of like an injustice or like, a uh, like something's not quite right it feels like there's like a little bit of a burden of responsibility mm -hmm. for shifting things. And so um, I, you know, when Lynn asked me to come to the other one, I, I was like, heck yeah. Cause I want to know more, right. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be, if I'm going to have this awareness of like the soul and how multidimensional it is and how expansive it is, I want to do that job well. And I want to know as much as I can about all uh, variances and incarnations and experiences and expressions that the soul can have 
so that I can honor it well, right? And so with this, it's like there's like a little bit of a burden of responsibility to uh, honor honor this mm -hmm. too. So yeah, it's like I said on your podcast, you have to go into this with an open mind mm -hmm. and to be ready because a lot of what you experience is absolutely beautiful, mm -hmm. beautiful guys. Yeah. It's beautiful. So this isn't a game. This is. Uh, after I get done saying this is all so silly guys <laughs> right uh it's it's both at the same time but um yeah just honoring the the beings yeah. the individual beings that I met and it's it's a gift to be able to see them so and mm -hmm. to know them well, I'm glad you enjoyed it mm -hmm. I'm glad you want to go again it yeah. kind of sucks you in and you it does yeah uh, yeah and you're welcome to go with us anytime. Yay, mm -hmm. Thank you. So. you. Guys, I passed you the test. <laughs> <laughs> I'm part of the club. <laughs> yeah, seriously, we all, you know, all both teams are really great, mm -hmm. open-minded, yeah. non-judgmental people. I think mm -hmm. I told you that from the very beginning. Yeah, you Just did. be yourself. Don't worry she about did. it. Yeah, so, I was like, Lynn, yeah. I'm nervous. I don't know how to go and be there. And she's like, Blair, they're fine. And I'm like, they, are, they were fine, but it's still, I'm like, still don't know how to be there. Like, show <laughs> up and just be. My, I needed AJ, my translator. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Does that wrap it up? That so. wraps it up. Well, okay. We have more stories, but we, there are other peoples to tell that we might get on the show. Later. That's right. We might yeah. get some other people to talk about this. So. Yep. And okay. we've got new stories because you're going to come back and tell us about uh, your experiences this week. So. For sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could have some freaking fun. There's just a lot out there to explore yeah. and yep. discover. So, yep. all right. Well, thank you. Thanks thank for being you. here, thank and thank you guys for coming on my podcast. Yes. This is a share. Yes, yep. it is. Get us both weirdos yep. in the yep. wild and the informal, informal mystic. mystic podcast. Yep. yep. All right. Thank well, you guys. Lynn, take us out for weirdos in the wild. Weirdos in the wild out. No, I'm kidding. It's <laughs> <laughs> not the way we end it. <laughs> your rituals, Jen. That's right. Lynn, you're messing the rituals. Up. That's right. I can't mess up the juju. So, mm -hmm. thanks for listening, everyone, and keep it weird, y'all. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us at Weirdos in the Wild. Please show us some love and support on our Patreon account at Weirdos in the Wild. Like us on all of our social media. And if you've had an experience you'd like to share with us, visit our site at weirdosinthewild.com. Until next time, keep it weird.